During the scaling analysis that gave us the geostrophic balance, we saw that the Coriolis terms are leading order when the Rossby number is small. In this video, we are going to examine this Rossby number, which is named for Carl Gustav Rossby, a Swedish-American meteorologist who made great contributions to our understanding of oceanic and atmospheric dynamics. Here, we will consider Foucault's pendulum to get an intuitive feel for the Rossby number. It's the dimensionless parameter that characterizes the importance of background rotation. We have seen that the Rossby number, RO, is U on 2 omega L, which can be thought of as the ratio of the rotation time scale, 1 on 2 omega, to the inertial time scale, L on U. So the Rossby number is small when the flow is slow, the length scales are large, or the background rotation rate is rapid. Now, Foucault's pendulum is a simple experiment conceived by Leon Foucault to demonstrate Earth's rotation. It consists of a large pendulum whose pivot is able to swivel such that the plane of oscillation is uncoupled from Earth, leaving it free to rotate relative to Earth. The plane of oscillation of the heavy pendulum remains fixed in space while Earth rotates underneath it, meaning that we, in Earth's rotating frame of reference, see the pendulum as rotating. The pendulum appears to process with an angular velocity that depends on its latitude, so that over the course of a day, the pendulum will make a complete revolution if it is at the north or south pole, or make some fraction of a revolution that depends on the sign of the local latitude. We can use a rotating table in the GFT lab to model Foucault's pendulum. Here we have two views of a pendulum mounted above a rotating table. One is from a camera that is fixed to the table, one from a camera is fixed in the lab. These provide frames of reference that are rotating and inertial, respectively. We set the pendulum swinging. We see that it has a period of about three seconds. The dashed lines are superimposed for reference. When the table is not rotating, the pendulum's path is straight back and forth in both frames of reference. We set the table spinning and observe the path of the pendulum to be deflected in the rotating frame of reference, yet remaining straight in the lab frame. As the rotation rate of the table increases, so too does the curvature of the pendulum's path in the rotating frame, all the while remaining constant in the inertial frame. This can be understood by considering the timescales here. The rotation timescale is decreasing as the rotation rate is increasing, and it is becoming comparable to the inertial timescale, which is the period of the pendulum. If we write the period of the pendulum in terms of its path length L, and its average speed u, we have t as l on u. Now as the ratio of the rotation timescale, 1 on 2 omega, to the pendulum timescale becomes small, the effect of the rotation dominates on the pendulum's path in the rotating frame. Now eventually, we reach a point where the pendulum's path in the rotating frame is almost circular, apparently barely crossing the centre of the tank.